Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Babel on Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Mem Beis, Daf 42 of Masechta Erevin. On the agenda for today, fruits and the Trum. What happens if fruit is taken outside of the Trum? Can you eat it? Alright, and then we get to the sugya of Throwing an item into a place where you can carry but not walk. Wow, what do you guys think about that? Chebe. We will begin on Daf Mem Aleph Mem Beis. Um, four lines from the bottom. Amr of Puppet says, Rav Puppet Peris Sheyatsu Chutz Netrum. Okay, so if you have fruits, and these fruits were taken outside of the Trum Shabbos. Okay. Vichazu. And then they came back into the Trum Shabbos. Afilu b'meizid lo ifsidu es mekoman. Now, even if they were brought back into the Trum Shabbos uh, on purpose, b'meizid lo ifsidu es mekoman, they have not lost out their initial place, i.e. the fact that they were initially inside of the Trum, maitaima anusininhu, how come? This is because they were taken out and brought back in against their will. Rav Papa is essentially making the argument that these fruits should be no different than a Yid who was removed from the Tchum Shabbos by Gentiles and then brought back into the Tchum Shabbos by Gentiles. And we said that it's as if he never left. So here also, Rav Papa wants to make the argument that you have these fruits. They were taken out of the Tchum Shabbos. They were brought back into the Tchum Shabbos. You know, even if this all happened on purpose, um, you would nonetheless be able to um, consume these fruits. All right. Ezvi Rav Yosef Bar Shmaya Lerav Papa. So now Rav Yosef Bar Shmaya, however, asks a question against Rav Papa from a brayser. Rav Nechemia, Rav Eliezer ben Yaakov Omim say Rav Nechemia and Rav Eliezer ben Yaakov. The Olam Asurin at Yarzul and Common Shogagin. So Rabbi Nechemia and Rabbi Lezben Yaakov, who of course are Tanaim, they said that you're not allowed to eat these fruits unless they were brought back into the Trum Shabbos by accident, Bishogeg. Only if these fruits were brought back into the Trum Shabbos, Bishogeg, can you consume them. Bishogeg in Bimezidlo. They would have to be brought back into the Tchum Shabbos Bishogeg by accident. However, if they were brought back into the Tchum Shabbos on purpose, well then it says Rabbi Nechemia and Rabbi Lez ben Yaakov that you would not be able to consume them. So it's a kasha on Rabbi Papa who says that if, who of course is an Amora, and Rabbi Papa is saying that if these fruits were brought back into the Tchum Shabbos on purpose, you can consume them. That goes against Rabbi Nechemia and Rabbi Lezer ben Yaakov. Tanoi, he, so the Gemara says that Lamaisa, it is a machlokas Tanoim. And Rabbi Papa is actually paskening like the Tanakama in this machlokas Tanoim. Let's see. The Tanias, we learn in the Brice of Paris, Sheyatsu Chutz Letchum. Okay. So you have fruits. And these fruits were taken outside of the Trum Shabbos. Okay, so now they're out, now you have these foods. They are not. They are no longer inside the Tchum Shabbos. They're outside of the Tchum Shabbos. Bishogeg yachlu b'meizid lo yachlu. So now we say, look, it depends. If these fruits were taken out of the Tchum Shabbos by accident, well then you can eat them even though they are right now outside of the Tchum Shabbos. If they were brought out outside of the Tchum Shabbos on purpose, then they may not be consumed. Okay. Now, Rabbi Nechemia Omer, it says Rabbi Nechemia, Bimkomen Ye'achlu, in their place, um, i.e., inside of the Tchum Shabbos, they may, they may be eaten. Shlo Bimkomen Lo Ye'achlu, however, outside of the Tchum Shabbos, they may not be eaten. Okay, now the question is, what exactly does it mean, what, what exactly is Rabbi Nechemia saying? So, Ilema, Bimkoman bimezid. So if we're going to say that what bimkoman means is that on purpose, meaning if we're going to say 
that Rabbi Nehemiah is saying that if the fruits were brought back in to the Trum Shabbos on purpose, Rabbi Nehemiah is saying that you would be allowed to eat it, right? I mean, Rabbi Nehemiah says, Bimkoman ye achlu. Inside of the Trum Shabbos, they can be eaten. So if we're going to say what this means, is that Rabbi Nehemiah is saying that if the fruits are brought back into the Trum Shabbos on purpose, they can be eaten. Or Vakatani Beheja, but we explicitly taught that Rabbi Nehemiah, Rabbi Eliezer, Ben Yaakov, Omrim, the Olam Asurin, Achi Chazulim, Komen Shogigin. But one second, Rabbi Eliezer, Ben Yaakov said, and Rabbi Nehemiah, Rabbi Eliezer, Ben Yaakov said, that these fruits can only be consumed when they are brought back into the Trum Shabbos, if they were brought back into the Trum Shabbos by accident, Bishogigin, Bimezid Lo. And only if they were brought back into the Trum Shabbos by accident, but not if they were brought back into the Trum Shabbos on purpose. Okay. So Elalav. Bimkoman Bishogik. So what it must mean is that when Rabbi Nehemiah says that Bimkoman Yeachlu, that these fruits are allowed to be eaten when they were brought back into the Trum Shabbos, it must mean that they were brought back into the Trum Shabbos by accident. Okay, fine. And the Brisa is missing a few words, and if you just add these few words, it will read much better. So if you have fruits, and they were taken outside of the Trum Shabbos, if they were brought out of the Trum Shabbos by accident, well then they can be eaten. If they were brought outside of the Trum Shabbos on purpose, so then they may not be eaten. And this is all the Tanakama. But Medvar Mamurim, when is this? Shalo Bimkoman. That is, if they were brought outside of the Trum Shabbos, and they are still outside of the Trum Shabbos. So we say that if they were brought out by accident, you can eat them. If they were brought out intentionally, then you cannot eat them. Avo Bimkoman, but if they were brought back into the Trum Shabbos, Afilu Bimezid Yeachlu. Even if they were brought back into the Trum Shabbos on purpose, they can still be in, because after all, they're right now in the Trum Shabbos. And that, of course, will be just like Rav Papa, who says that if these fruits are brought back into the Trum Shabbos on purpose, you can eat them. But also, Ibn Chemi Lameymar, now Ibn Chemi is coming to argue and say, Afilu bim koman nami, that even when these fruits are brought back into, into the Trum Shabbos, nonetheless, Bishogeg in bimezid lo, you can only eat them if they were brought back in bishogeg, but if they were brought back in bimezid, you may not eat them. So what do we see? So we see that there is a machlokas between the Tanakama and Reb Nechemya regarding fruits that were brought back into the Trum Shabbos. The Tanakama says that when fruits are brought back into the Trum Shabbos, even if they were brought back into the Trum Shabbos bimezid on purpose, you can still consume them. Whereas Rabbi Nehemiah argues and says, no. When you can consume fruits that are brought back into Trum Shabbos, it's only if they were brought back into Trum Shabbos by accident, but not on purpose. And therefore, a Papa is saying, like the Tanakama in that Brisa, that you can eat fruits that were brought back into Trum Shabbos, be mazed. So the Gemara says, lo. The Gemara wants to say, no. That is not how you learn the machlokas between the Tanakama and Rib Nechemya. Bimezid, bimkoman, the chuli alma lo pligi de aser. So the Gemara wants to say that actually everyone will agree that if these fruits were brought back into the Trum Shabbos on purpose, well then they may not be eaten. Even the Tanakama would agree with that. Okay, fine. So the Tanakama is saying, so the Tanakama is saying that if the fruits are brought back into the Trum Shabbos on purpose, you cannot eat them. Now, if they were taken out of the Trum Shabbos, or if they were taken out by accident, you can eat them. And if they were taken out on purpose, then you may not eat them. Okay, fine. And that is exactly where they're arguing. About when they are outside, they were taken outside of the Trum Shabbos, and they are, the fruits are still outside of the Trum Shabbos, but they were taken out Bishogeg. Tanakama sovereign Bishogeg Shari Shlobin Komon. That the Tanakama holds that when fruits are brought outside of the Tchum Shabbos by accident, you can eat them. Rebbe Nechemya Savar, whereas, but Rebbe Nechemya argues and holds, Afilu Shogeg Bim Komon in Shlobin Komon Lo. Whereas Rebbe Nechemya holds that, no, even 
when we're talking about an accident, even when we're talking about Bishogeg, they can, the fruits can only be consumed if they were taken into the Tchum Shabbos by accident. But if they are outside of the Tchum Shabbos, then even Bishogeg, they may not be eaten. Okay, so what do we see now? So we see that everyone agrees that fruits that were brought back into the Tchum Shabbos may not be eaten if they were brought back into the Tchum Shabbos on purpose. And therefore, a papa has nobody to go like, no Tana to go like. But the Gemara says, wait a second. But Vahami de Katani, Rabbi Nechemya, Rabbi Liazu ben Yaakov, Omrim, the Olam Asurin, Achei Chazulim, Komun Shogigin. But one second. When Rabbi Nechemya and Rabbi Liazu ben Yaakov said that you may only eat these fruits that were brought back into the Tchum Shabbos when they were brought back into the Tchum Shabbos by accident, Shogigin Mezid Lo, that only when they're brought back in by accident, but not on purpose. Michlal, that implies the Tanakama server, that the Tanakama argues and holds, B'mezid nami shari, that you can consume these fruits, even if they were brought back into the Tchum Shabbos on purpose. Shmamina. So we see, okay, you're right, you're right, the Tanakama does in fact hold, that if fruits were brought back into the Tchum Shabbos on purpose, you may consume them, and Rav Papa holds like the Tanakama. Okay, very, very, very nice. Let's go weiter, Chavre. Omer of Nachman, Omer Shmuel. Hoi Mahalich, when you dare Trum Shabbos, Mahalich Alpayim Psias Benonios, Vizel hi Trum Shabbos. This is an awesome line. Nu Chavre, if I had to give you a ruler, well, I guess if you had a ruler, that would make things easier. But Nu Chavre, how far away is 2000 Amis? I don't know. I wouldn't know when I got to 2,000 Amis. So says Rav Nachman in the name of Shmuel, you know what? If you're like me, well, like me as in Shreli, not me as in Shmuel, you know, if, if, if you're somebody who doesn't know exactly how far an Amis, so th- here's a here's a little hack you can do. That I mahalich ben yodeh tchum Shabbos, if somebody's walking and he doesn't know exactly when his tchum Shabbos is up, mahalich alpayim psiyas benonius, so you can walk just 2,000 regular steps. This is Tchum Shabbos. The assumption being that an average step is, is, is an Amma. Therefore, walk 2,000 Amis and that's enough. Because after all, this isn't a Dindar Arais, it's a Dindar Abonon. And I guess the rabbis worked in, you know, you don't have to be exactly 2,000 Amis. The point is we don't want you going on big trips, right? But as long as you're not taking more than 2,000 steps, then um, that's okay. All right, fine. Very nice. Chavret, let's move on. From Rav Nachman of Shmuel, and says Rav Nachman in the name of Shmuel, Shavas Bibika. Okay, so we have a friend, and he makes Shabbos in a big open field. So that's a Carmelis Seder, whatever it might be. Well, no, I mean it's important. It's a Carmelis because he won't be able to carry more than four Amis, right? He makes Shabbos in a, in a, in this big open field, so he can't carry more than four Amis. But he can walk 2,000 Amis as long as he's not carrying. But Chever, listen to what happens next. And then, during Shabbos, Gentiles came and put up a wall around where he was. You know, and a, like a big wall. A big wall. You know, such a big wall that he, you know, he, can, he can walk 2,000 Amis and st- still be within the walls. Right? But... He, so now he finds himself in an enclosed area. So now we've learned on a few occasions that a wall that is built on Shabbos is a good wall. And as long as he doesn't build it on purpose, he, he can take advantage of it. So this wall was put up by non-Jews uh, on Shabbos, but it's nonetheless a good wall. So now, interestingly enough, so we have two things at play over here. We have Tchum. And we have carrying. Those are two separate things and they're governed by different rules. So in terms of carrying, he can carry, right? They put up the walls. Also important to note, it was hukaf ladira, it was made for living in, so therefore it's considered like a Rosh Hashayachid. And you can carry in the entire enclosed area. However, that does not have an effect on Tchum Shabbos. Tchum Shabbos is still Tchum Shabbos. And that is based on where you are when Shabbos began and what things were like when Shabbos began. When Shabbos began, there was no walls up. And therefore, you can only walk 2,000 Amis from where you were when Shabbos began. 
So now you're in an interesting situation because on the one end you're in a place where you can carry in the entire enclosed area because it was hukaf the dira and the walls are good. But you can only walk 2,000 amas. So what, you know, how can you relate to this, these parts that are still within the wall but further than 2,000 amas away from you? You know, so you're allowed to carry in those areas, but practically speaking, how can you actually carry since you can't walk in those areas? So, so what you can do is you can walk 2,000 amas in any direction. And you can take advantage of the fact that you're allowed to carry in this entire closed space by the fact that you can throw into the rest of the area. So you can kind of walk 2,000 amas and then throw something and you can um, take advantage of a halachic loophole and feel really good. Ravuna Amar, whereas Ravuna disagrees with Rav Nachman and says, Malachapayim Amar, that you can walk 2,000 amas, sure, but umetatal dalid amas. But you cannot carry more than four amas. Ravuna, what's the problem with Rav Nachman's pshat? Why don't you just do like Rav Nachman? You can walk 2,000 amas in any direction. You can carry, and you can carry in the entire enclosed area. And you can, you know, and when you can no longer walk, you could still throw something. So, so Rav Huna is concerned that if you walk until the end of the 2,000 amas and then throw something, you might then continue after the object and walk past 2,000 amas. But Mias... Where, where am I? Okay, about Pai and Mias Litato. So the Gemara, Kiorche. So the Gemara asks, but okay, but then at least carry within the 2,000 Amis. Why is he saying you can only carry within four Amis? So listen to the Gemara's answer, our favorite Sugya. Mishum Davi Kimichitsa Shinifritsa Mlo Lamakoma Asula. Well, because, says Rafuna, well, since you are unable to carry outside of the 2,000 Amis by throwing, since we're concerned, Shami Yimashech Achachefzo. Well, therefore, now what do we have? We have a place where you're allowed to carry, i.e., this entire 2000 Amos area. You can walk there, it's surrounded, so you can carry. However, it's, once you get to the end of 2000 Amos, it's a place where you're not allowed to carry, because you're not allowed to walk there and you're not allowed to throw there. So basically, we have a situation of a place where you are allowed to carry that's completely opened into a place where you're not allowed to carry. And as we know, when you have nifrit sabim lo, the makoma asr, when you have an area that even though meikar adin, you can carry in that area, but it's completely breached into an area where you cannot carry, well, then you cannot carry even in the initial place. And therefore, you may not carry more than dalit amas. You can walk up to 2,000 amas, but not carrying anything. Chia barav amar said chia barav mahalech al paim amar umtalta ba paim amar. So chia barav seems to have this sort of middle position, which is that um, you can carry anywhere within those two thousand amas, but you can't throw outside of it. So now the Gemara says, "Come on, it's lo krav nachman v'lo krav huna." We say, but that's like neither like krav nachman nor like krav huna. It's not like krav nachman because krav nachman would say that you'd be allowed to throw outside of the two thousand amas. But Chia Barav is saying that you cannot throw outside of the 2,000 Amas because Shema Yimashe. And also, it's not like Ravuna, because Ravuna would say that you can only walk, that you can only carry for Dalit Amas. But Chia Barav is saying you can carry in the entire 2,000 Amas. So, Ema Metato Ba'arba. So, rather what I'll say is, no, what Chia Barav is saying is that you can walk the entire 2,000 Amas, but you can only carry for 4 Amas, just like Ravuna. Yachi Hanu de Ravuna. But exactly, saying the same thing as Ravuna. So, Ema Vechena, Amar Rabchia Bar Rav. So, the Gemara says, yeah, what I'll say is, and similarly, says Rabchia Bar Rav, that just like Ravuna says, that you can carry, that you can carry only four Amis, and you can walk the entire 2,000 Amis, Chia Bar Rav says the same exact thing. Omle Rav Nachman, Ravuna, Lutif Lugale de Shmuel, the Tanya Kavasis. Now, Rav Nachman says to Ravuna, do not mess with Shmuel. Do not argue with Shmuel because we have a brisa that said like Shmuel to say that you're allowed to throw. You know when you when there's an area where you're allowed to carry but not walk, you can throw something there. Titania, as we learn in a brisa, Hoya moded uva. 
If you have a person who is measuring how far he can walk with his Tchum Shabbos, and his Tchum Shabbos ends smack in the middle of the city. So you can carry in the entire city, you know, assuming that they did an Eruv or so whatever they had to do, you can carry in the entire city. But don't go past the Tchum. Isn't that super interesting? This was a big Chiddush for me. I wonder if there's somebody who like argues on this. This is a big Chiddush for me. You know, I thought that as long as the city is within the Tchum Shabbos, you can carry in the entire city. Meaning, I always thought that if you have two cities and they're 4,000 Amos away from each other, so just making, just make your Shabbos smack in the middle and you can walk 2,000 Amos to either side of where you're technically making Shabbos, and then you, and then, and then you walk from one city to the next city. And you can, you can walk, you know, inside, like once you, one, as long as you, as long as this, you get to the city within the 2000 Amis that you're allowed to walk. So then I thought that you can, once you get to the city, you could walk in the entire city. But here we're saying that no, you still can't go past your Tchum Shabbos, even within the city. Meaning you would have to make sure that the entire city is within the Tchum Shabbos. That's so nuts. I didn't realize that. Anyways, that's what we're saying. So if, you, if your Tchum Shabbos, at least that's what this verse is saying, if your Tchum Shabbos runs out in the middle of the city, right, so your 2,000 Amas end, uh, you know, end smack in the middle of the city, so you can carry in the entire city, you know, assuming that they did whatever they had to do to allow you to carry in the entire city, but you're still not going to be able to walk past where your 2,000 Amas ends. Very, 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 very interesting. Now, how are you going to carry in an area that's past, right? We're saying you can carry in the entire city, but you can't walk past where your Tchum ends. So how are you going to carry in those areas? So what it means is you're going to throw something there. So we see that we have a Brisa saying, uh-oh, that you can throw something, that, right, that when you're not allowed to walk somewhere, you can still throw something there. Um, Ravuna says, no, Ravuna says, no. What that means is you can pull something to you from outside of the Trum, but not that you can throw something outside of the Trum. Okay, fine. Besides, so Rufuna defends himself and says that there's no Brysa supporting Shmuel. Amr Rufuna said, Rufuna, uva. If a person was measuring v'chalsa midaso b'chatsi chatser, and his Trum Shabbos ends in the middle of the chatser. Ein lo ela chatsi chatser. So you can only carry in that first half of the Chatzar. Pshita, this is obvious. Ema yesh lo chatzi chatzer. So, no, so rather what I'll say is, um, the point is that the Chiddush is that he's allowed to carry in the half of a Chatzar that's within the Tchum Shabbos. But Hainami Pshita, so that's also obvious. No, but Ma'u I may have thought, Leichuj Dumu Asil Tatuli Bechula. Kamashman, I may have thought that if I allow you to carry in half of this Chatzar, well, then you might carry in the entire Chatzar. So then, Kamash Malan, that um, you're nonetheless allowed to carry in the half of the Chatzar. Well, uh, yeah, you're nonetheless allowed to carry. That you're nonetheless allowed to, I guess, walk and carry in that first half of the Chatzar. And we're not concerned that you are going to end up walking and carrying in the entire Chatzar, even past your Tchum Shabbos. Okay. Amr Rav Nachman says of Nachman, Mode li Huna. So now Rav Nachman says to Rav Huna, he says, Admit to me, Huna. Haya Mode Uva, Vachos Midaso Asfas Tikra. That if you have a person who is measuring, and it turns out that his Tchum Shabbos Mamish ends right at the, um, edge of a, uh, roof, right? So imagine he's like measuring and measuring and measuring, and then he gets like some Chatzer, and he goes inside of the Chatzer, and now um, he can carry, he's in Rosh Hashayach, he can carry, then he keeps on measuring and he gets to like this house, and that's where his measuring ends, and there is a like roof, kind of right where his measuring ends. So we say, and the roof is of a house, and basically, can you like throw something into the house, okay? So now Ravuna had said that when we have this interesting situation where like, 
your tchum ends, but you could still carry, so you're not allowed to throw something. But says of Nachman, Rufuna, you gotta admit to me that in this case, you'll be able to throw something into the house. We'll be able to carry in the entire house as long as you're not walking over there. My time I'll come whole since the roof of the house will view it as if it kind of goes down to the ground, and therefore it's like a hecker, and you're not going to end up kind of walking into the house. Okay, very very beautiful. Omer Vuna, Breder of Nosin. Now says Vuna Breder of Nosin Kitanai. So Rav Huna Breder of Nosin wants to argue that this machlok is between Rav Huna and Rav Nachman about are we concerned that if you have, when you have a situation where there's a place where you're allowed to carry but not allowed to walk, are we concerned that if you throw something there you might end up walking over there? So this machlok is Lamaisa, is the machlok as we see in our mission between Rav Gamliel and Rav Eloza ben Azariah on the one hand and Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Akiva on the other hand. Let's see. We said that if they, you know, if the Gentiles take this Yidala and they walk him outside of the Tchum Shabbos and they bring him to the next city. Or they put him in some kind of other enclosure. So Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Lezub and Azari, Om Mahali Cheskula. So Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Lezub and Azari say that once they bring you into this enclosed area, you can walk in this entire enclosed area. Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Akiva, Omrim, Eino El Adal, El Arba Amis. Whereas Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Akiva say you can only walk four Amis in this enclosed area that they put him in. My love, Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Lezub and Azari, the Amru, Mahali Cheskula. So let's say that Rabbi Lezub and Azari, Rabbi Gamliel, who say that you can walk uh, in this entire enclosed area that they bring him to, that's outside of the Tchum Shabbos, right? They bring him outside of the Tchum Shabbos, put him in some kind of enclosed area. Rabbi Lozman Azar and Rabbi Gamliel says he can walk there, in the entire area. Because they're not concerned that if you can walk in this enclosed area, you might end up walking in an open area, meaning if the Gentiles took him out of the Tchum Shabbos and just left him in an open area, so then he's only allowed to walk four Amis. Now, Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Lezben Azari are not concerned that if we say that in the enclosed area he can walk in the entire area, we're not concerned that he's going to end up also, you know, walking more than Dalat Amis if they leave him in an open area. And since they're not concerned about one kind of walking from another kind of walking, Right? They're not concerned that if you can walk in an enclosed area, you'll walk in an open area. Tiltul atuhiluch lo gazre. They also don't make gazeras of moving, uh, of, 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 of moving something because of walking. Meaning, they're not concerned that if you throw something outside of, of the Tchum Shabbos, that you might end up walking there as well. They're not concerned. So they would be like Rav Nachman. Rav Yoshua, Rav Yekiva. To Omrim Eino ala Arba Amis. And Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Akiva who say that even in this enclosed area that this Jew was brought to outside of the Tchum Shabbos, they say that you can only walk four Amis. Because they're concerned that if you can, that if you, that we allow you to walk inside this enclosed area, you might end up walking more than Dalar Amis when you're in an open area. And since they are making Xera of walking because of walking, of walking inside of the enclosed area because they're concerned that you might end up walking in an open area. Gazri tilto atu hiluch. Did I, did I read that wrong? Umidi hiluch atu hiluch gazri. Tilto atu hiluch nami gazri. So they also make a gzera of moving something because of walking, right? Meaning they're going to also say that you may not throw something outside of the Tchum Shabbos because we're concerned that you might walk outside of the Tchum Shabbos. Okay, so we want to say that Rav Nachman would align with Rav Gamliel and Rav Lezub and Azariah, and that Rav Huna would align with Rabbi Yoshua and Rabbi Akiva. Mimai, the Gemara says, but who says that that's the right way to break things up, to categorize things? Dilma kilo gazer Rav Gamliel, Rav Lezub and Azariah, hiluch sair vidira tu hiluch bika. Maybe the only reason why Rav Gamliel and Rav Lezub and Azariah do not feel the need to make a gazera of walking in the enclosed area out of concern that he might end up walking in the open area. That's because 
they're two separate places, right? The open area and the enclosed area are two separate places and therefore they're not concerned that if we allow you to walk in the enclosed area, you might walk in the open area. However, being concerned about moving because of walking, meaning like in this place where this fellow was spending Shabbos and then they put up the walls around him where there is no differentiation, there's no visual distinction between where he's allowed to walk and where he's not allowed to walk, well then maybe, maybe there they would be concerned that he might end up following this object that he threw. Why, why, why are we just assuming that the reason why Rabbi Yoshua and Rabbi Akiva say that you're not allowed to walk more than four Amas even in this enclosed area. Why are we assuming that that's because they make a gezerah of Hiluch because of Hiluch? Dilma, maybe, Mishum de Kasavre, maybe it's because they hold, Kiamrinan Kolabais Kulo Ka'arba Amas dummy, that when we say that you're allowed to walk inside of an entire house and it's considered like four Amas, Hanimile Echa de Shavas Bavar Mechitzes Mibod Yom. That is only when, um, Shabbos started, he was, he was already in an, in an area that was surrounded by four walls. But if when Shabbos started, he wasn't in that enclosed area, then he wouldn't be able to walk in the entire area. And the reason why this person was brought and put inside some enclosed area by non-Jews, the reason why he's not allowed to walk more than Dalat Amis, it has nothing to do with because we're concerned that if you walk inside of this area, then you might walk inside of an open area. No, it's, it's, it's just technically speaking, you can only walk inside of an enclosed area if you were there when Shabbos started. But over here, you weren't there when Shabbos started, so therefore you can't walk. But in terms of, are we concerned about, uh, you know, Gezerah, Tilto, uh, you know, uh, right, Shemi Mashik, Acher, Chefzo? Maybe not. Maybe they're not concerned about it. So, so it's non-conclusive to say that Rav Nachman, that the Machlokus of Rav Nachman, Rav Huna is like the Machlokus of Rav Gamliel, slash Rabbi, Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah, and, um, Rabbi Yeshua slash Rabbi Akiva. Chevra, we're gonna stop over here. That was Daf Membez of Masechta Ervin. Let us recap what we learned. So the first thing that we talked about was fruits and the trum. So we talked about fruits brought out of the trum, right? That when you have fruits inside the trum that you brought outside of the trum. So Tanakama says if you brought them outside of the trum by accident, well then you can eat them. And if you brought them outside of the trum on purpose, then you cannot eat them. Whereas Rabbi Nehemiah says that whether you brought them on purpose or by accident, you may not eat them. Whether you brought them out of the trum by, on purpose or by accident, you may not eat them. Now, fruits that were brought into the trum, so Tanakhama says, whether they were brought inside the trum by accident, whether they were brought inside on purpose, you may eat them. And uh, Rabbi Nehemiah says that um, if they're brought inside the trum on, by, uh, by accident, so then you can eat them, but on purpose you cannot eat them. Then we talk about throwing an item into a place where you can carry but not walk. So Rabbi Nachman says in the name of Shmuel that you can do that, whereas Rabbi Huna and Chia Barab say that you may not do that because we're concerned that if you throw something there, you might end up walking there as well, and you're not allowed to walk in that area. However, that was Daf Membez. I hope you enjoy that. Peace out.